Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Walking Through the Scriptures with Joseph Pahoda. I got another movie recommendation or review today. It's called God Forbid, The Sex Scandal That Brought Down a Dynasty uh, on Hulu. And it's basically the story of Jerry Faldwell Jr. and his wife. And for those of you who don't know, Jerry Faldwell Jr. was the president of Liberty University, one of the biggest you know Christian universities in America. And... He resigned, and rightfully so, because basically he and his wife um, were basically, you know, <laughs> make a long story short, basically swingers. And, well, at least, well, yeah, I guess you could call him that. Um, basically, his wife um, uh, propositioned this 20-year-old kid in 2012 back in Miami when they were on vacation or whatever in Miami to have sex with her, and then as he was having sex with her, the husband, Jerry Faldwell Jr., excuse me, Jr., wanted to watch. It was found out later in the documentary, however, that Jerry Faldwell Jr. took pictures of this and also videotaped this as well. Um, so they were literally making their own porn, if you will, by committing adultery with another person. And Jerry Faldwell Jr. was, in fact, he was the one video recording it, he was like in the corner, if you will, getting off on it, if you will, why his wife was doing this to this 20-year-old man. You know, basically little kid actually just graduated from high school a couple years, removed. And the, the movie takes a lot of twists and turns um, from there. Um, it started off as oral sex, if you will, but then later on the, the Faldwells said, hey, we want to go more with it. And it went into full-blown sex after that. And both the Faldwells were both in complete agreements with this. So much, in fact, that basically um, the wife was like, hey, um, I'm basically falling in love with you. I now have feelings for you. I don't want this to be just like a couple of times thing. I want to continue to be with you and so on and so forth. And Jerry Faldwell Jr., the president of Liberty University, is like, yes, we want this to happen. So to make a long story short, um, they're like, hey, why don't you come to Lidsburg, Virginia, which is where Liberty University was. So they kind of went back and forth, blah, blah, blah. And make a long story short, this relationship went on for years. Um, this adulterous, scandalous um, affair went on for years and with both people were involved with it, okay? So now this is a big scandal, of course, because he's the president of the one of the largest Christian universities in America, Liberty University. And so this was kind of a secretive thing, but they really kind of took this kid in. His name is John Carlo, by the way. And this is John Carlo's side. Now, one thing cool about what John Carlo did is, is he basically kept all his receipts, if you will, from all the pictures they took with him, all the text messages on his cell phone and all that. So when the, score, when the story broke out, John Carlo had all this evidence. And you're gonna, if you watch the movie, you're going to see all this. Where, you know, text message after text message and photograph after photograph, John Carlo has evidence of everything that he's saying. <laughs> okay, so they can't deny it. He was there. He has the pictures to prove he was there. and He has the pictures to document what he was saying. Um, so they befriended this kid so much. In fact, he basically kind of came like one of the family. They went back home to Virginia. They introduced John Carlo to like all the, because the Farwells have three kids, around about his age. They introduced him to all his kids, all that kind of stuff. Like he became one of the family. He would go to Liberty University, all that kind of stuff. And then eventually what happened was the Falwell said, hey, we want to basically, you know, bless you with a property in Miami. So go ahead and get a property in Miami. We'll basically buy it for you. And you'll basically be like a co-owner of this. And in doing that, you know, we'll buy it for you, but you're a co-owner. And basically just want to hook you up. Well, he's like, shoot, you know, you have the money. You want to bust me with a property in Miami. So let's go ahead and do this. So this was the beginning of the downfall, though, because what happened was Giancarlo was, was a friend of, the, of a guy named Tito Fernandez. Tito Fernandez was basically a hustler. A basically, and his dad supposedly was a real estate agent, but it turns out he, I guess he wasn't really a real estate agent. So he's basically a con artist. To make a long story short, that he partnered with the Fernandezes to basically get this property in Miami, which he did. And 
The Falwells bought the property, so John Carlo could be the owner of it, if you will. And then the Fernandezes, the father anyway, got the commission, which was like 50, 50 grand. The problem is, though, again, he never really was a um, real estate person anyway. But anyway, so times goes by a little bit, and he's still having the affair with the wife. Jerry Falwell Jr. is still there and all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, one day out the blue, the Fernandezes decided to sue um, Jerry Falwell and John Carlo because they said in this contractual agreement, you guys owed us more than just more than just a commission. You owed us 50 percent ownership of this property. So they're basically suing them for the other like fifty percent. Like I don't want just fifty grand. I want the other fifty percent. Now it turns out they didn't want the fifty percent, according to the documentary. They knew, they, they did some research and they found out that Jerry Falwell Jr. was the one who purchased this, this, um, this property and they knew the Falwells were cash cows and they knew they could get a lot more money if they milked this. So what happened was at the time all this was going on, now this is where it gets really interesting, Jerry Falwell Jr. was very good friends with Donald Trump. Okay. Now this is back in 2012. So this is before 2016 when he became president, but this is all going to tie into that too. And the Falwells were like, Hey, would, Hey, John Carlo, would you like to meet the Trumps? And he was like, sure. I mean, Donald Trump and he knew Donald Trump for the apprentice TV show and all that. So they, they fly to where Trump was and they go to Trump hotel and there's pictures of him with Trump and he's meeting Trump and all this. So the Falwells were good buddies with Donald Trump. And, and because of their scandalous sexual affair, now John Carlo was now friends with Donald Trump. Well, like I said, this, this lawsuit comes out. John Carlo calls Jerry Falwell Jr. And he's like, look, I got these people suing me and therefore they're suing you. I think, I think they're blackmailing us for, for more money. So what are we going to do? So they're like, Jerry Falwell's don't, like, don't worry about it. So what he does is he calls Michael Cohen. Now, for those of you who don't know, Michael Cohen was one of like Trump's right-hand man at the time. And he calls Michael Cohen. And for a while, Michael, Michael, Michael Cohen got the lawsuit dropped. It, for a while, if you will. So it looked like everything was in the clear. Everything was good to go. Then, all of a sudden, the 2016 like elections, before the 2016 election, Donald Trump decides he wants to run for president. But he can't run for president until he gets a supporter, until he gets backed by somebody. So he's looking for a nomination. He's looking for somebody that will, will basically stand up for him and give him a nomination and say, I support Donald Trump for president. And who does he look towards? He looks no other than George, Jerry Falwell Jr., the president of Liberty University. So make a long story short, Jerry Falwell endorses Trump. Trump becomes president in 2016. Now, where it becomes very interesting is, yes, Michael Cohen seemingly um, made the lawsuit go away. But in doing so, Michael Cohen now has all the tapes and has all the photographs. Because remember, Jerry Falwell Jr. videotaped all that. He made pictures of all that and whatnot. So now Michael Cohen has access to all this information. So the way the, document, the, um, the, the documentary basically pictures it, Michael Cohen basically said, hey, I made something go away for you, this lawsuit. Now, you got to do something for me. In this case, you got to do something for my boy, Donald, i.e. Donald Trump. So basically, the way the movie presents it, now again, Jerry Falwell Jr. says in the documentary, Jerry Falwell Jr. denies all this. Go figure. Um, but Michael Cohen's like, hey, I made this go away for you. Now I need you to endorse Donald Trump. Jerry Falwell does. Trump becomes president in 2016, right? He's still having an affair. Now, again, their affair started in 2012. It's 2016. They're still having an affair. The affair still has not stopped. So at this time, around about this time, John Carlos is like, look, you know, you're twice my age. I don't want to do this affair anymore. I want to start dating somebody of my own age. She doesn't like it. She's like, I've fallen in love with you. I want to be with you. My husband wants you to be in our life. I mean, just weird. I mean, really, really weird. Um... But, so he starts dating his girlfriend. Make a long story short, his, him and his girlfriend broke up. Um, you know, the wife, Jerry Falwell's wife, I keep forgetting her name, but um, Jerry Falwell's wife acts like, you know, she's sad, but she really is not because deep down she still wants to be with him. 
And there's, there's, he's, and, and John Carlos still has text messages on his phone proving all this. Um, so Trump becomes president in 2016. So now John Carlo, you know, he's like a, a big guy. You know, they even invited John Carlo to the wedding of the Fardwells. When one of the Fardwell children had a wedding, he was invited to the wedding. Like he became a big deal. And then all of a sudden, the court case comes up again, and it still wasn't resolved. So to make a long story short, um, Jerry Falwell Jr. decides to settle with Tito Fernandez. So he settles with Tito Fernandez, but yet John Carlo got no money from it. He got nothing from it. That wasn't the agreement. They're supposed to be like co-owners or whatever. And he settled. So Tito Fernandez gets a huge check and John Carlo gets nothing. He's like, look, you settled, but like... I'm, I'm, a, I'm partnering with you, and one, you didn't tell me you were settling, and then two, where's my cut, if you will, because I'm supposed to be a partner with you, and you, you've done nothing for me. Anyway, while all this is going on, there's a, report, there's a reporter that's trying to gather information on all this, right? Um, and oh, by the way, then they kind of start presenting this blackmailing thing against John Carlo. Like, look, you don't know who you're messing with. You don't know who you're dealing with. You know I'm president. You know I'm friends with President Trump. I'm the president of Liberty University. You're just some basically pool boy from Miami. You don't want to mess with this type of thing. And to his credit, John Carlo is like, is like look, um, you know, basically you're a piece of crap. And if you really, if you really want to take me down, no problem. You're going down with me. And that's when he contacts the uh, re the, the journalist that actually contacted him before. He contacts him back now and he says, hey, I want to talk to you. He talks to him and all the stuff comes out. Now, before it comes out to try to make it better, Jerry Falwell Jr., he presented his counter story before all, before all of it came out. And he's like, no, this was just some indiscretion by my wife. My wife cheated on me, but I didn't know anything about it. Turns out all that was a lie. All of it was false. It was all spin. And it was just crazy, okay? This guy's a sleazebag. He's basically a swinger. And he's basically pimping his wife off, and he's videotaping it, okay? He's a total sleazebag. His wife's a sleazebag, too. Um, and they're, just a, they're, they're liars, and they're hypocrites. And there's just so, all kinds of deceit, and it's just crazy, so, but again, John Carlo had receipts on all this. So when the reporter asks him all these questions, he has all these questions. He's, he presents them with all the information and bang, they can make this movie and he's got receipts on everything. So yeah, it turns out that uh, Jerry Falwell was completely bad and wrong and a liar and deceiver and sexual immorality like crazy. Him and his wife, he resigns from Liberty University. He's no longer the president. Good. Um, also, I found it a very interesting take, though. When John Carlo came with this allegation, turns out there was many other women who were sexually assaulted and raped and stuff in Liberty University. And after John Carlos exposed Jerry Falwell Jr., then all these other people came up and said, hey, I've been screwed over at Liberty University, too. And they were kind of sweeping under the rug, covering up, using their fame, money, prestige, and power to cover stuff up. I found that to be very interesting. So, this is a good movie as far as it's it's um, the facts and how it was presented. It's really good. It, it's very enlightening and eye opening. A couple of things I didn't like: the first fifteen minutes or so are very like sleazy, scandalous, risque, very lustful. I had to fast forward through a lot of it. It was really just like I don't need to see this. But I understand why they did it to. To show how sleazy the Falwells are and how seriously scandalous this scandal really was. But once you get through that, then it gets really interesting. Because you start to see how the Falwells are really messed up. And how, and how long this affair really went on. Now there's a section in the middle of the movie where I don't like. Because this movie has a bias. It's very anti-Christian, I feel. And they really like... They made a big deal about Jerry Falwell Sr., i.e. his father. And now, back in the day, you know, he was very anti-abortion and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And he used the abortion laws to basically weaponize Liberty University 
and to rack a lot of money for this. Now, I will say this. Um, in that regard, Liberty did, did two things, and which I do believe the movie shows very well. Liberty University is a cash cow for Christian evangelicals. Um, and Jerry Falwell Sr. used abortion back in the 70s and 80s to really funnel money through Liberty University. And they, they, were, they were saying he was making like $100 million. Liberty University was making over $100 million a year. And they were using political things like you know, gay marriage or, in this case, anti-gay marriage and anti-abortion laws and, um, and or just different things like that to ma materialize these issues and make a lot of money off of these issues. The other thing that Liberty University did was they used their platform at Liberty to endorse these candidates like Donald Trump. Donald Trump gave his speeches at Liberty University at their convention center. And that, 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 that traces back all the way back to Ronald Reagan in the 80s, okay, with Jerry Falwell Sr. So Liberty University, and if you know anything about Liberty University, they are extremely political. They basically endorse every Republican candidate that comes through. Even if that Republican candidate like Trump has a very questionable past, because they show in the movie where he admitted to sexually assaulting women back in 2005. By the way, we still have the audio tape, guys, when he admitted to that. Why Trump is not in jail, I have no idea for sexual assault because that's what he did. Um, we still have that tape. And they show that in the movie. Um, so Liberty University became like a melting pot of church and state mixed and married together. And how Liberty University basically was pumping these candidates out and basically making them presidents. And the movie shows where Jerry Falwell Sr. had a very famous quote. He's like, he said, I'd rather be a king maker than the king. Because when, when Trump got in office, he actually wanted to be, he wanted Jerry Falwell Jr. to be his secretary of education. And Jerry Falwell Jr. turned it down because he remembered his father and said, I'd rather be a king maker than a king. And then, well, he became the king maker because he made Trump president. Okay, and again, John Carlo, this 20 year old kid, he's now mixed up in all this world. <laughs> now, granted, he was wrong for sleeping with the wife, but he didn't get into it to get into all this. You know, he was like he said in the movie, I'm, I was just some horny 20 year old kid. Uh, but now he's mixed up in all of this politics and all of this money and all this so called. And I say so called because obviously the Faldwells were hypocritical, they were fake. They weren't true Christians. They weren't acting like Christians. They weren't doing anything godly, but they were doing all this sin and ungodliness and money, greed, and power all in the name of Jesus. Okay? It's crazy. Now, with that being said, I, I didn't like it. Now, I, I liked it and didn't like it. I liked it in the fact that they used, that, how they used political things to, to, for money and how the, the movie exposed that. I also like how they showed how Liberty University was very mixed in very much mixed in politics and how that got corrupted very, very quickly too. But I didn't like how they twisted Christian stances. Like, so if you were against abortion, the, the movie basically sounded like you were a scumbag. Or if you were against homosexuality or gay marriage, you were a scumbag. Like, it was, you could tell it had a very liberal slant. And I'm like, what does this have to do with the pool boy and the scandal? Like, this is additional stuff that has nothing to do with the actual scandal itself. And it, 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 it's a very anti-Christian propaganda plea. And I'm like, that has nothing to do with the scandal. Stick to the to text, please. Stick, stick to the context, which is the Faldwells and he been, him being president of Liberty University and the scandal, the sex scandal. This anti-Christian propaganda has nothing to do with it. So I didn't like that. But then I did like at the end how they tied it to the January 6th uprising against the Capitol. It turns out Jerry Falwell Jr. was very good friends with Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk is, he's the head of like Turning Point USA. And he's a very Republican conservative, you know, voice out there. And they were on CNN or whatever. And Charlie Kirk is wearing his Liberty University sweatshirt. Uh, so Jerry Falwell Jr. and Charlie Kirk were like boys. And as it turns out, which I did not know this on January 6th, Charlie Kirk, rent, according to the movie, rented like 80 buses to bus 80 people 
to the White House so they could be a part of that resurrect or resurrect not resurrection but um, insurrection. That's the word I'm looking for. Insurrection event. Now, how are those buses paid for? According to the movie, those buses were paid for by Jerry Falwell in Liberty University. That's scary. That's scary. Um, and how they were using their twisted view on Christianity to take back our country, even if it means taking it back by force and taking it back by violence. Um, I thought that was interesting, but at the same time, very, very scary. Um, cause obviously that's not Christ-like what happened at the Capitol that day was not Christ-like. Um, it was very much insurrection and it was just wrong. And the fact that Christian religious zealots financed by Liberty University were a part of that is just appalling. But the movie shows that connection and I'm like, wow, what the heck did I just see? That was, that was a big, 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 um, turning point. And again, then there was, there was very much a pro-abortion agenda. And then it showed how even though Jerry Falwell was a scumbag, or not Jerry Falwell Jr., and his wife were scumbags, and even though he resigned and him and his wife and all that got kicked out, they're like, well, he's still kind of a hero in this regard. He got Trump in there, and then Trump got the new Supreme Court people in there, and they got Roe versus Wade overturned. So even though he's a scumbag, he got done what he wanted to do. He overturned Roe versus Wade, which is a battle his father was fighting ever since the 70s and 80s. So they're like, the Falwells finally got what they wanted. It took 50, 60 years to get it, but they finally got it. Um, and it, as, so I'm like, yeah, you can tell this is very much a liberal pro-abortion agenda movie. And I'm like, again, what has that got to do with the pool boy and the scandal? Not much, really. So I didn't like that in the movie, but this movie's good, everybody. Um, it shows, again, the old adage, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And Jerry Falwell Jr., was, he, he acted like he was king. He had all that money. He was the president of the largest Christian university, evangelical, one of them anyway, in America. He was tight with Donald Trump. He was tight with Michael Cohen, which is, you know, Trump's right-hand man. So if, if he had a problem, he could just call Trump's guy and say, hey, man, I got some help. I need help with these Fernandez's people. Squash it. It's kind of like the mob, okay? Christian mob, that's, that's what it is, okay? And that's what the Falwells were. And they thought that they were bond, uh, you know, beyond being touched. They thought they were be, uh, you know, beyond reproach. And nobody could touch them. Well, tag, you're it. John Carlo wasn't the one. And he got you. And rightfully so. And it goes back to right what the Bible says. Whatever's done in the dark will be brought into the light. Good, bad, or indifferent, you're going to get, you're going to get caught. You're going to get exposed. It's going to happen. And thus, this life or the next, it may come out even after you after you died, like Rabbi Zacharias. You know, things may come out after you've already gone, but it's going to come out. In this case, it came out when Jerry Falwell Jr. was, still, you know, and he was here, and he was the president of Liberty University, so he didn't die. He was still here. And it, it came out why he's still living, okay? And uh, he resigned, and rightfully so. But it also shows what a hypocritical, deceiving liar he is. And just totally fake. Now, there's a really one-minute snippet, though, to which I found very interesting. Um, I'm about ready to close. Because remember, again, he, John Carlo was around the Falwells, which also means he was around Trump, which also means he was around Trump's people. Well, one of Trump's people was a spiritual advisor, which was Paula White. Well, he talked about meeting Paula White. <laughs> and he said basically Paula White was a fake because Paula White in front of the cameras acted all spiritual and speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, all that. And then behind the scenes, Paula White was like flirting with him and stuff too. So much in fact that even John Carlo's mom was like, oh yeah, I see it now. I see what you're saying now, son. It's all a show. They act Christian when the cameras are on, but behind the scenes, they're flirting with you. They're, you know, they're doing this and doing that. So basically, they're saying Paula White was fake too. They're saying Paula White was a flirt. They're saying Paula White was basically kind of sleazy scumbag as too. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they said. That's what they showed in the movie. I'm like, oh my gosh, they just made a huge dig at Paula White. <laughs> I was like, oh, shoot. I'm like, I wonder if Paula White's lawyers got a hold of that. 
Um, because they're, they're saying Paula White was a flirtatious scumbag too. Um, and, and in doing so, they're saying Paula White's a fraud. Paula White is fake. They're saying Paula White's all about the show. But she's not real. She's fake. That was only about a minute in the movie. But they did say that. And, I'm like, and they showed Paula White speaking in tongues and all that. And I was like, whoa, they're talking about Paula White. I found that very, very interesting. Okay. Um, so this is a good movie. I highly recommend it. Again, the first 15 minutes or so, um, you might might want to fast forward some of it. It's very risque. It's, it's for some people who are, you know, tempted with lust and stuff. And again, I, and I don't want to be tempted, so I had to fast forward through some of it. It was, but if you can get through that, um, it gets good. It gets really interesting. Um, obviously, it's not suitable for young children, so this is a very adult content movie. But if you want to see some of the scandals, some of the sex scandals, some of the lies, some of the money, some of the greed, and also this Christians using their power and money and influence to affect politics in an unholy way, um, this movie will show all of that. It'll show all of that. And it's, it's, it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary. So uh, watch this movie. It's on Hulu. It's called God Forbid, uh, the scandal that brought down a dynasty. Honestly, the dynasty of the Falwells. Because remember, Jerry Falwell Jr. was the president. Then when he died, Jerry Falwell Jr. Or senior died. Jerry Falwell Jr. became president once he died. So this was like the, the Falwell's baby. And Jerry Falwell Sr. died. And then Falwell Jr. and his, and his wife and everything got kicked out. And by the way, Falwell Sr. is buried at Liberty University. So by kicking... Not only did they get kicked out, but they also got banned from the campus. So basically, the Falwells, they can't even visit his dad's own grave. I thought that was interesting, too. Um, that's why they call it the fall of the dynasty, because this is no, no longer Falwell's babies. Like, you got to get out of here. Um, so, God forbid, on Hulu, um, the sex scandal that brought down a dynasty. Um, watch it with caution, but I, I highly suggest you watch it. Because it'll show how there's a lot of fakes... A lot of liars, a lot of deceivers, a lot of hypocrites that claim to know Jesus. And they don't. And it reminded me of the text where Jesus, you know, they say, Lord, haven't we prophesied in your name? And haven't we cast out demons in your name? And haven't we done miracles in your, in your name? And Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you. And that scripture kept coming up every time I kept watching this. The other thing that kept coming up was it says how Jerry Faldwell Sr. was the preacher. Jerry Faldwell Jr. wasn't really of that ilk. He was more of the businessman. And that really, really hit home with me too because when you, tur when you turn church into a business, in this case, when you turn Liberty University, a Christian college, into a business, and then you mix it with politics, that's a recipe, that, that's a powder keg for disaster. And that's what happened. And that's exactly what happened. So absolute power corrupts absolutely. When you turn, turn church into a business, it's going to get corrupted. And that's what happened. So God forbid a sex scandal that brought down a dynasty. Uh, watch it. It's interesting, to say the least. If you like this, hit the like button. Hit the, the, uh, the share button. Share this as many people as you can. And hit the subscribe button. Um, I really think that you... Uh, well, enjoy this movie. Hit the subscribe button uh, so you can be have access to my further videos. Um, but check out this movie. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Until next time, know that God loves you too, and I do too. God bless. Bye, everybody.